You're not, you cannot tell me that God wouldn't walk where people were screaming and cursing. I believe God would just raise up his hand, grab a mic, and say, I just want to let you know, I love you, and I would still die at a cross for you. Let, let's look at this, if you can. Uh, turn with me, 1 Corinthians 1, 18. And bless you for those that are able to stand. Amen. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God. Now now look at this verse. This is really neat here. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Just the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And look at this part. And the weakness of God, the weakness of God is stronger than men. That tells me how powerful God is. His weakness is stronger than man. And just imagine, his strength is way beyond our comprehension of how strong that he is in power. And I'd like to read that one scripture, John 15 and 13, if we could. If you could turn over to John 15 uh, and 13, a very familiar scripture. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. I'd like to just kind of tonight just preach a simple little thought, no greater love. Could you say that? No greater love. Could you just give the Lord a praise offering, a wave, amen, look at somebody and just, just, just greet them in the name of the Lord. Give the Lord another hand clap. You could be seated. No greater love. I thought I heard, did I hear the girl say that? That sounded really good. Could y'all say that again, no greater love? That sounds good, doesn't it? I heard heard them say that, and that that just sounded good. There is no greater love than God. I don't don't know where people look today. They They look for other places for love. And they think they have found true love. But it's love that is only temporary. It's not something that's going to last. I'm so thankful that I went, when I went to an old-fashioned altar that I found true love. Now, I know in the physical, many of you don't know the story, but, you know, uh, my wife and I, when we met, it was kind of an interesting twist, interesting story, uh, because actually... Uh, I had somebody that was trying to introduce me to somebody, a young lady in a church in Louisville, Kentucky, and they were giving me directions. Well, they were trying to introduce me. They said, you need to go to this wedding. We want to introduce you to this young lady. She's in church. She, you know, uh, she, she's going to be at that wedding. And I was like, okay. So anyway, I was headed to Kentucky anyway because my one of my friends, my best man in my wedding, he was, li- he was living in, in Louisville. Uh, at the time, so I was already going to be there. I said, so why not? You know, what's it going to hurt? I might find true love, you know? And uh, so, so uh, anyway, um, I uh, was trying to get directions. I said, well, how do you get there? And I called my friend, Chris, and he was like, I, I don't know. I, I said, well, you live in Louisville. He said, yeah, but Louisville is not like Winsboro. It's a big place, you know? I mean, there's like, if you look in the phone book, I remember I got bored one time. I was sitting... Uh, in, in, a, in a car, no, I, I know what it was. I, I, let me backtrack. I, this is when Sister Amy and I were first engaged, and she was working at a optometrist, for an optometrist there, 
And so I was there with her on her job, and I was kind of bored. I, I was just sitting around while I was waiting for her to get off, you know. And so I was sitting there, and I picked up the telephone book. Y'all remember the telephone books, the old yellow telephone books? And uh, matter of fact, I got one in the mail the other day. I was kind of shocked. I'd never seen one. It's been a long time since so I've got a telephone book. It was a little tiny thing. And uh, anyway, I was kind of bored, so I was just looking through the, the yellow pages there. And I noticed that there were like 60, 63, I think, McDonald's in Louisville, Kentucky. So compared to Winsboro, that's a little bit bigger. So anyway, what, I'm, what I was going to get to, so I, I told him, he said, well, this is a big place. You, you need to find somebody who goes to that church. Well, at the time, there was what was called instant messenger where you could, like, chat. And uh, it, it wasn't Facebook, but it's called AOL, instant messenger. And so this lady that uh, was trying to introduce me to some, this girl, she said, well, there's a young lady that goes to this church. I'll give you her name. And so I got on there and messaged. I said, could you give me directions? I'm trying to get to your church for a wedding. So we got, got to chatting on there. And she said, here's the address. And so anyway, uh, I, we were going to the wedding. We never could find it. Uh, my friend Chris, he said, I've got the address, but there's like, this is kind of confusing. We didn't have like GPS like we have today. And so... We never made it until later. Actually, we, we got there later, and everybody was gone. There was a few people cleaning in the fellowship hall, so I missed the opportunity, okay, sort of. You know, there was another opportunity to get out of the store. But anyway, uh, I never did uh, meet the young lady, so I ended up coming back home. And then on this semester one day, I'll never forget, my dad was sitting uh, my, on my bed. He, we were just sitting there. He was talking, and... and uh, her name popped up, and it said, hey, did you ever find that church? And I said, no, I didn't. I said, but thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry about that. And, um, and then she started asking, I started asking questions, and we started talking. And next thing you know, she started calling. I started calling. And anyway, that's how we met. And so I never dreamed that I was going to find the Lord would send somebody to me, that I was actually trying to meet somebody else. That's the way the Lord works. Of course, if you ask my wife, she tells people all the time, say, where do you and your husband meet? And she tells everybody, I met him on Desperate.com. That's not true, you know. That's, you know. But anyway, that's how we met. And I thought about it was true love because everything fell together because of God. And I, I remember my dad, when we started talking, we was chatting and everything, my dad said, this might be the one. <laughs> and uh, I told him that's probably the only prophetic words I ever heard him speak in my life, you know. And, uh, but uh, anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is it was true love because everything fell into place. And we realize that now today because the Lord put us together. But when God puts something together and he puts people together and he puts a plan together, there's nobody can tear it down or break it apart. I, I like what somebody sent me the other day. They said, when God gets ready to do what he wants to do for you, or someone, there's nobody in hell or nobody on earth that can stop God's plan. I believe that tonight. But he had the perfect plan. Anybody ever had the perfect plan and it's like it fell apart? It's like, well, I thought that was a good plan. Let me tell you something. Don't ever think that you got the perfect plan uh, when it's dealing with God because he's always got the wisdom. His foolishness is greater than our wisdom. It's what the Bible says. Uh, but the love of God is something that I really don't understand why somebody would choose to take their life and die for me. That's why this is extra special. This is why I push so hard to try to be here on a Wednesday night. This is why I try to, to be in the house of the Lord, and I try to get up, and I try to pray, and I try to seek the Lord because I can't understand a love that somebody would have for me that would die on a cross and shed blood. Aren't you thankful for the love of God? Amen. So it was the perfect plan. He would come as flesh, though. He came as you and I, and he shed blood and he died on a cross. He would become the ultimate, the Bible says, perfect sacrifice. And so we've been on his mind since the beginning. He had the greatest plan ever. Uh, 
God is the greatest when it comes to putting things together. In Genesis chapter 2, he, he, he talks about, in, in verse 4, uh, he talks about these are the generations of heaven and of the earth. Uh, when we were created in the day that the Lord God and the earth and the heavens and every plant and every field before it was in earth and every herb of the field before it grew. He had a plan. He had it all. Uh, he, God's love is found in creation. And he put everything together. Every herb, uh, the Lord God, not caused, he, for he had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist. He thought of everything. The Bible says in verse 6, he thought of a mist. Well, I need something to water and to take care of the herbs and the plants. So he created a mist. And the Bible says he watered, is what it says, the whole face of the ground. That's in uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 6. He watered the whole earth with a mist. I got to thinking about that. Now, that had to be a bit different mist than maybe what we're used to. God just has a way of supplying our needs. And, and I, I hope tonight that you came here tonight with an anticipation of, and let me remind you of the love of God. There's no greater love uh, because God, he's got you on his mind. Even though sometimes we think, well, you know, it seems like I've had people, and I, and I want to be honest with you, uh, I've had people to, 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 to tell me this. But they, they've said, Brother David, I just, I don't know. Everything just seems to be going south, going wrong, so to speak. Nothing's going right. I just feel like God has forsaken me. David went through that. I, I got to tell you, I was kind of overwhelmed the other day at home. I, I was not feeling well, believe it or not. Uh, I was not feeling good at all. Uh, I, I, I had an earache the other day, and I just was, it was hurting. And then I had this toothache. I just had a lot of things going on at one time, and it was in a lot of pain. My wife said, you just seem like you're in some pain. I said, I am. I'm just in a lot of pain. And so I was trying to do some work and try to do some stuff, and I was sitting there, and I kept getting texts and texts from people, Sister Julie from school, saying, make sure you got this. They're coming this week. This, and it just was overwhelming. And so I finally just I had to take a time out and say, God, I just need your peace and I need your strength. And I'm trying to explain this because sometimes you've got to deal with these type of things to understand it. I don't know how to explain it. In people's eyes, they cannot understand why you take a little time out and, and pray and open up your mouth and say, God, would you help me? Would you give me strength? They don't see how that's going to work. But I'm telling you, in the matter of minutes, there was a peace of God that came over me, and it was... I thought about this scripture, and this is what I had intentions of, of teaching on uh, uh, baptism tonight, but I said, well, if the Lord decides to move in another direction, this right here is what got me. When, when, when there was a need, there was not rain and thunderclouds like we're seeing outside tonight, uh, God said, I'll do something else. He, he, he has a backup plan. And so he used the mist. Think about that, to cover and water the whole face of the ground. And so that little prayer that I prayed, God, give me peace. The Bible said he will give you peace that passes all understanding. Now, I want to tell you something tonight. You're hearing pastors say this, but I hope you've got enough inside of you to realize, and if you can walk out of here tonight with your head lifted up, I want you to know this, that I am so thankful that when people don't understand how we can stop and pray and look up to God and ask for help and guidance. They don't see how that helps because they don't know the love of God like I know and like you know. No greater love uh, can, can, can die on a cross and do the things that he does. And, and so I go to my source. Now when I have a need, I just go to the Lord in prayer. Today, right this morning, as I pulled out of my drive and I was headed to school, I had somebody in tears, had somebody that said, Brother Smith, we need prayer. I'm talking about I could barely get my eyes open and drink three swigs of coffee and get in my car and try to, I was already 30 minutes late to school. But somebody had tears in their eyes and they said, Brother Smith, please, we need prayer. 
I'm so thankful that I know a God that I can go to right there. My little girl asked me, said, Daddy, said, you know, uh, I don't understand what people do that don't have God in their lives. You know, when we started to leave out tonight, her and uh, Brother Cameron was sick. First thing I heard was, we need prayer. You know, please pray for us. I don't know what I'd do without prayer. I don't know what people do. I don't know how they make it without prayer and the love of God. Aren't you thankful for the love of God? He's like a mist. Tonight, I hope that I can spray a little mist on you. We, we walked outside today, and it was hot all day inside, and we was able to go outside for a few minutes before the rain set in for recess, and there was a cool wind that started blowing, and boy, it felt so good, and I just felt like, to me, that's like the presence of God. When Adam and Eve were in the uh, garden, one of the treasured moments that they mentioned in the Bible was they could go to the Lord and pray and talk. They enjoyed talking to the Lord. What did the Bible say? In the cool of the day. A lot of people say that's in the morning time, right before it gets hot and all that. Well, it's just something about the refreshing of God's presence and spirit. I hope tonight you can feel a miss. You can feel uh, uh, his love. When I come in this place, I feel his love. I feel your love. I feel everybody's love. I, I love it when people walk out here and say, man, I can just feel the love of God. That's what we want, amen? No greater love. Can you give the Lord a praise? Amen tonight. He, he, said, uh, he, he said, I'll create man, uh, the Lord formed man out of dust. You know the story. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And he became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant in his sight. I, I always wonder what kind of trees. They had to be extravagant, beautiful trees. And good for food and a tree of life, the tree of life that we preach about and talk about even in the book of Revelation, the end time will be there. That tree of life uh, can sustain life. It can give healing and it can give uh, a great deliverance because God created it something special and in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil and you know that uh, the knowledge became an issue because people the, in the garden Adam and Eve desired to have knowledge but he said it's good and uh, he said it's also uh, evil and so God had a plan in the beginning, and so the love of God was in existence. Now, when you love God, you keep his commandments, the Bible says. When you obey God, you love God. He said, if you love me, then you'll keep my commandments. You'll obey my commandments. When a person, people say it all the time. You can ask 100 people out on the street and say, hey, do you love God? Oh, absolutely, I love God. What's the Bible say? If you love God, he said, you will keep my commandments. Um. And so, everything that man needed, God provided. Everything that we have need of, he provides. Isn't it amazing that all of you have different needs tonight? You came to this place of worship. Uh, when I walked in, I had my own needs, you know. Uh, we were back in, uh, right, right at the entrance when you come in the, the sanctuary there, and we were talking about uh, our ailments, <laughs> our knees, and our elbows, and our shoulders, and and uh, uh, we were talking about, boy, this part of getting old is part, part of the process. And everybody has aches and pains. And, but, but we walked in here with specific needs probably besides physical. I believe there's people in here that need mental healings. They need physical healings. Um, you're not alone. There's a lot of people out there searching you know, what's crazy is that people are out there doing the things they're doing because they've never experienced the love of God. I'm thankful that I've experienced the love of God in an old-fashioned altar. But I've experienced the love of God, the things that He does in my life. He's, he's helped me. He's been with me. He's been true to me. He's a friend. The Bible says it's sticking closer than a brother. Amen. And so God has that perfect love and verse 18 in Genesis 2 said and the Lord said it is not good that man should be alone I will make him a helpmate for him and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall and of course then we know the story he created Eve and um, so we find that the word was coming forth through the spoken word of God 
He breathed the breath of life into them. And so uh, it seemed like the perfect plan, the perfect love, okay? It seemed like everything was going great. Matthew 24 and 35. Matthew 24 and 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. We've got to believe this word. This word, I don't care if a nuclear bomb blew up everything around us and there was nothing that exists and it was all ashes, dust, and just, uh, just the ground. Even though you don't see a Bible, the word still exists. There's power in the word. You may say, Brother David, what, do we, what would we do if we didn't have the word of God? What if they come in here and took all the Bibles away? Well, that's why it's so important that we get as much of this word in our heart. There's enough, I, I believe this. Now, I'm not saying it's enough by no means. We got to fill up. You, you don't just put uh, the gas you got in the tank out there in your car, uh, is not going to be enough to make it the rest of your life. You're going to have to fill it up again. We know that. Well, when I say this, I'm not, I'm not saying that I've got enough and that's it. But I believe if everything was taken away from, from us this day, especially myself and my heart, there's still enough word in me that would allow me to live because that word of God lives on the inside of me. It's a reminder of love and hope. Now, that doesn't mean, okay, well, I'm not going to read the Bible anymore. I've got enough to last me until God comes. No, I've got to keep seeking and reading the word. I've got to keep chewing on this, eating this, digesting this. I've got to pump it in me. I've got to get as much of it. And, and, and I don't know, you can't, you can't teach it, preach it. You've got to live this. You got to want the Word of God in your life. Uh, there was a lady today. My my wife, she does co-op with some people, and uh, we were talking. She was talking to them. They they were doing a co-op, a, a community thing with the, uh, the, their kids, and she was talking about the Bible and and uh, something come up about you know uh, reading the Bible and uh, and my wife was like, well, my kids they'll they'll listen to the app. And they'll listen to preachers. They got favorite preachers and, and that preach the, the word. And uh, that lady was shocked. She's like, no, wait a minute. You mean your kids like to listen to people on an app or radio preaching? And they do. Uh, you got to have some type of love. And, 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 you know, a lot of, I have students in school. I've told them that. They'll say, well, who, what's, who's some of your favorite preachers? And who, who do you, and I'll tell them, of course, they like, I don't know them. And uh, you try to tell them about the Word and about people preaching that. And they're like, I just don't, my preacher is boring. I don't like to listen to, you know, I don't know if I could do that, you know. And they, they said, I like the music. And, so, and when we eat on Sunday sometimes, I like, that, that's, that's what they like. And, and so what I'm saying is you, there, there has to be a love of God first. You don't just say, okay, you need to learn the Bible. You need to read the Bible. You need to start liking preaching and, all, you need, and, and reading your scriptures and all that. And my wife's telling that lady, said, there's got to be a love for it first. You know, you got to get to know, you know, before you, when, when you get to, to know somebody, you got to establish a relationship first. You got to get to know them. And so I think you just need to get to that. When you get to know about this Jesus, and I'm reminded, when, when I got somebody that, that wants to die for me, shed blood, and, and go to a cross and forgive me of my sins, man, that says, he. He cares. Something's different about this man. I want to know more about him. Well, well what am I going to do? Get on a plane and fly up there and sink? No, I can't do that realistically. But I can talk to him. I can pray to him. I can read this word. This is my way of getting close to him. And you got to love that word. And when you love that word, man, it does something totally different to you that you can't even imagine. And I've, I've had people that say, well, David, I tried reading. I'm just not much of a reader. Look, there's all kinds of technology today. My, my wife's got me hooked on this, this new thing right here. There's, there's a thing, it's called, Brother Ryan, Speechify. And you can take it and you can scan a page. Just hold your phone up here and scan the page. And you can, I can scan about 10 pages. And then I can sit there and I can just play it back. And it will just, and you can pick out whoever you want. You can pick anybody's voice, you know, to, to, to read. Uh, now, Brother Cameron put on there this, uh, uh, you jolly old chop, would you like to come for some tea, you know? He, he do some kind of English uh, per speaking person, Australian. I'm like, no, 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 just give me some person that's got a voice, that's clear. And uh, uh, now, 
They have Snoop Dogg. I'm not, I don't, I'm sorry, but I do not want Snoop Dogg reading the Bible to me. There's just not something that's not right with that, you know. But I'm telling you, and I told somebody, I said, boy, it'd be something if we could take all these people in Hollywood and all these people that don't like God, and you could, you could have some of these people who don't even believe in God, have them read the Bible. Man, that, boy, we could really, we could change some stuff making them uh, read the Bible. Uh, my little girl said, Daddy said, you know, I don't like buying, said, but if I could get him to read the Bible, said, maybe I'd get him to read the Bible to me or something, you know. But what I'm saying is, isn't it amazing technology? And, of course, I'm one, I'm, I'm kind of old-fashioned. I, got, I, got a, I like turning pages. I have a little girl in my class. We have online books. Uh, I know Sister Leslie and Molly. And, by the way, happy birthday to them. Amen. Happy birthday. Can we give them a hand clap of praise? Amen. Amen. Um, I, I know they do these AR and um, accelerated reading programs and stuff, and I have some kids. We have some online e-readers. And uh, this one little girl said, Mr. Smith, we have to do the books on the computer where you just read them on the computer and they read them to you? And I said, no. She said, I like to hold a book. I do too. Even when it comes to the Bible, uh, we got iPads and phones and stuff, but it's just something still about having your Bible, isn't it? But this is the love of God, no greater love. I just cannot express enough uh, somebody that would die on a cross, somebody that would care enough to look down to where we're at in time and say, I know they're going to fail. I know they're going to slip up. I know those people in a jail cell tonight uh, have done all manner of things but you know what? I still love them. Isn't that amazing? Does that just blow your mind? No greater love. I don't believe anybody um, could, could, you know, um, could, could love uh, like uh, Jesus. And I, I, I'm reminded now of this story. A few weeks ago, when we were at that service on a Wednesday night. Um, I think it was Brother Adrian, wasn't it Brother Placio, I believe, the the guy from Los Angeles that was preaching. And uh, I could not believe this. But he had a relative. He got up and he said, I just want to say this tonight, that I understand the love of Jesus tonight. He wasn't the preacher that night. He was supposed to preach on that Friday night. But he said, I understand the love of Jesus tonight. And so I'm like thinking, okay, well, what did he do? He understands the love of Jesus. What's he talking about? You know, I understand that too. I, but then he went on. And this just blew me out of the water here. He said a few months ago, uh, he said, my dad was assassinated, was killed. Uh, and he said, uh, I, I don't know the story. He's a missionary, so it could be something political. I don't know. But he said he killed my dad and killed him in cold blood. And he said, I watched him die right there before my very eyes, and I saw the man do it. And he said, I cried, I wept, we mourned, we buried him. He said, I went on about my business, preaching and sharing the gospel of Jesus. And he said, we crossed paths again in that jail cell. And the Lord told him, said, I gotta, you got to do what I did at the cross. And he said, there was that man that killed my dad in cold blood. And I opened the jail cell, and he said, can I go, go up to the man? And of course, the guards, they knew the situation. They was like, no, absolutely not. You stay back. And the man saw him, made eye contact, and it was quiet there for a little bit, and he walked up to him, and hugged his neck, and he said, I love you, I love you, and I forgive you. And the man wept and cried and dropped to his knees and said, I don't know what to say. This is unbelievable. He said, there must be a God. And the man got up and walked off. How many people could do that? He said, I can't do that. But the love of God, no greater love than God on the inside of me could help me do something like that. Now, you think about that. Let that really sink in. Can you imagine something like that happening? What I'm saying is, 
with all the sin and immorality and all the stuff that's going on in our world today and how they treat and run down God and the Christians in the church, you're not, you cannot tell me that God wouldn't walk in that place, an assembly somewhere where people were screaming and cursing, and I believe God would just raise up his hand and grab a mic and say, I just want to let you know, regardless of what you think of me, I love you and I would still die at a cross for you. That's the love of God. Because you and I, I know myself, there's some people that do things that probably if I had a flashback and look and see what they were going to do or say, I'm not going to do this for them, you know. That's the flesh talking. And we have to get out of the flesh, don't we? I know I blowed y'all's mind. It blew my mind. We were sitting there, and I was just like stunned, you know, about what had happened. Satan hates the love of God. He hates love. That's what's wrong with America. People say, what's this? It's immorality. It's, it's they're disobeying the word. They're, what the bottom line is, is hate. He's stirring up hate. He's stirring up hate amongst people, races, countries, uh, people. One of the first things that the devil tries to do is to destroy a love that you have for God. His, his ultimate goal right now for everybody in this place of worship is to destroy what love you have for God. And you may not consider it a great love. You, and I'm not saying you don't love God. I'm just saying there's a deeper love that I'm trying to get us to tap into tonight that would just kind of blow your mind about when you get into the love of what God is wanting you to experience in His Word. You, you, I've always said this. You cannot teach people to pray. you got to love to pray. You cannot teach people to read their Bible. they got to love the Bible. Um, I know I bring this up a lot, and I'm, I'm closing here because I want us to get out of here quickly. I know to, for, I want to get you home and everything, but I say this all the time, and uh, I testify about this because they're, they're good friends of mine, uh, but we talk a lot of times about that group, David and the Giants. There's two twin brothers, and uh, they were on marijuana, cocaine, LSD, you name it. They were on everything you could even imagine. They were in the rock and roll world. And uh, this is what blows me away right here is that God, in the midst of their marijuana smoking and all this, they were high as a kite. And uh, they were at a concert rock, uh, singing. They were getting ready to, they were getting ready to do a, a record deal the next day with Def Leppard and some of them... Uh, big companies, and make millions of dollars. But the Lord spoke to them and said, this is not the right love. You're in love with the wrong thing. And, and, and I've heard them testify about this, and I've talked to them personally. And I said, what kind of voice did you hear? And we, we, we want sometimes to, I've heard people say, well, if you want the Lord to speak to you, read his word, because his word will convict you. It will, it will. But the Lord spoke to them in an audible voice, just like I'm speaking to you now. It blows my mind because, to me, I look at the love that God put uh, in their lives, and it was all because they had never experienced a type of love. He said, Do you, he said you're loving the wrong thing. And the, the other guy that was in the band that was the drummer was the, the little Ricky on the I, Lo I Love Lucy show, Keith Thibodeau's his name. He had already left the group because he said, I'm sick of this. He went to a, a, a church and was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he got baptized in Jesus' name, and he left the group. They said, we can find another drummer. And, of course, after they, they, when they left, and here's these people high on drugs, and an audible voice still spoke through that. And said, this is the wrong kind of love. And, and they just simply walked out and said, what love are you talking about? And he said, the love of God. I love you more than this world. And said, you're going to have to give it up. And, of course, they ended up, they called their, their, their brother David. Here he is in Los Angeles getting ready to sign with the Def Leppard and all these big-time groups. And... Here they are getting ready to sign it, and they called and said, we're not going to do this. We have found something God has spoken. You are high. You are crazy. And they've testified about this. 
And anyway, they didn't do it. And he said, I give up all of that money. And he said, I walked out of there and said, what am I doing? I am really crazy. But they ended up finding the Lord. They went to a black church. They went and knocked on churches. And, and this is another amazing thing. Talking about Jesus' name, baptism. While they were walking down the road, the Lord said, you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And they said, baptize in the name of Jesus. So they started walking down the road and asking churches, would you baptize us in Jesus' name? They said, we don't baptize in Jesus' name. Well, would you baptize us in Jesus' name? He said, why? And he said, because God just spoke to us. Here's some long-haired looking hippie rock stars or whatever. They're thinking, you guys are high. Get out of here before I call the cops. Y'all are stoned. You are something wrong with you. And they went down to the Catholic church, and they walked over there and knocked on the door, and they went, the priest come there, and he looked at them, and he's like, can I help you? And he said, would you baptize us in the name of Jesus? And he said, get out of here. They finally found a black church, and they said, how do you all baptize? And they said, in the name of Jesus. He said, would you baptize us? They, they baptized them in the name of Jesus. They spoke in tongues, received the Holy Ghost, got off of drugs, got off the rock and roll world. And, and, and then they, they had to convince David he wouldn't go. The lead singer, the guy, he was still, man, I've been doing rock, man, that's all I know. So he tells the story how he goes in that black church, and he's sitting on the back, and he said, I was just trying to get a friend off my back. And he said, I walked in there, and he said, I've never been loved before until I got there. People were coming up shaking hands, hugging necks, and I wasn't used to that. And he said, man, we love you. And I'm like, how could you love me? You don't know me. He said, it's the love of God. And he said he felt, felt something special. And, and what I'm saying is, God spoke through those guys. I don't know. He had never done that to me. I had never heard him say, I love you. Give up this. He don't do that to me. But something got inside of me when I was filled with the Spirit. When I came to an altar, I repented of my sins. And I became a part of this wonderful work. Now, that's, that's their testimony. I remember one time I walked up to him and I said, I don't have a testimony like that. And he said, you have a greater testimony. And I said, what are you talking about? I said, I've never done anything like that. People like that kind of stuff, I guess, because it's a great thing. He said, no, it's an even greater thing that God kept you from all of that. He said, we should be dead. He said, I look at Deaf Leper now and see what he's singing about and see how that man looks and what he sings about. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I'm not like him, you know. They wrote that song, Highway to Heaven, and that man wrote that song in the back of the car before he died, Highway to Hell, and he said, that man don't know what he's singing about. Nobody wants to be on the highway to hell. What I'm trying to tell you, only the love of God can do stuff like that. Praise the Lord. Aren't you thankful for the love of God? Would you stand tonight? I, I, I want to challenge you. Um, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life. I've heard people say, well, I'll tell you what, I, if I had to do it for my kids, I'd do it. Well, that's different. That's your kids. And I believe you'd do it if it come down to it. I believe that people have done that. But for somebody that don't know you and don't, have, don't know anything about you, but to still look and say, you know what, I'm still going to do that because I love them. I love mankind. I he, God does not hate any of these people that's doing all manners of sin and stuff like that. You know, people are so stressed out about, Brother Reed, about all this stuff going on with celebrities, about all this stuff going on with movie stars, about all this stuff going on in our world. They're mixed up with things, athletes. They're saying this, and it's totally against the Bible and everything. But it's because they don't know the love of God. So my challenge to you this week, take the cross so much more serious as we journey to Sunday. I don't know. Find you a place to really thank God for the cross. Thank, find a place to really thank God for his love. There, there's a lot of love in this place for our children. There's a lot of love in this place for your family. Uh, Brother Ed will get up and he'll say, pray for my family, pray for my family. How many times have you heard Brother Red say, pray for my family? There's a love there. There's a love of God that when you love God, God's going to take care of his own. And I believe that tonight more than anything else.
that God, if we can just keep this wonderful love, keep the love of God in our services, keep the love of God for these people. Now, are they going to be perfect? No. Nope. These little kids, these new people have been coming the other night, the other day, Brother Cameron, he came home and he said, Daddy, said he's all excited and everything. And um, I think the first couple of, uh, uh, I think, Sundays or something like that, I remember brother. I remember Sam and maybe one of the girls or one of y'all had walked it to him and said, "I don't know how you keep how you keep your composure because he keeps asking questions and he's excited and he's all getting the you know." And he come up to Cameron another day and he said, "Man, I just love this." He said, "This is just exciting, you know." And and and, and there's a newness about it. There's an excitement, but you know what it's really all about. Uh, the lady back there had tears and she walked up to me. When we, and, and when he walked out, she had tears in her eyes. She looked at me. She said, Brother Smith said, uh, I, I said, well, it's all exciting new and this, this fun stuff they do. He said, he seems like he's pumped up. said, no, he's actually found somebody that cares about him. Boom. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what it's supposed to be. Let us show that kind of love to people. I... I've said this several times, but we've been to several churches where, I've been to churches where we went there and visited and nobody said anything to us. And I walked out of there and I was like, man, you know, that was weird. But I have been to some other places where they just eat us up. I got a little bag somewhere down here. I don't even know what I did with it. I've been, I've been waiting to preach. Uh, I can't even find it yet, but I'm going to preach one one, one service, I've been uh, stirred and hungry to preach about. We went to this church to visit just a while back, and they gave us a bag, and it was like, you are special. Thanks for being our guest. And, and man, everybody just made us feel so good. Now, I'm not saying you got to give a gift and you got to do all that, but what I the greatest gift that you can give somebody is the love of God. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands. Would you love him just a moment tonight? Could you thank him just... Tonight, can you thank him for, first of all, his love for you dying on a cross? I think that's the most important thing right now. We wouldn't be here tonight if it had not been for the love and the grace of God, the mercies of God. Can we just love him, just thank him just a moment for the cross. Thank him for just dying on a cross and shedding blood. And he took the stripes for our healing. When you ask for prayer, he took the stripes for your, your healing. Amen. Can you just love him just a moment? Just tell him, God, I love you tonight. I, I love you. I praise you tonight, God. I magnify you tonight, God. I thank you for this. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, God. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for this. Would you give the Lord a praise tonight? Give him a praise offering.